I got to play uh, this. Uh, I want to do this Tom Segura thing. So I guess okay. Tom uh, Tom Segura is one of these guys on the internet. Now, he's part of the, the Rogan uh, family, is Tom Segura. And Tom Segura occupies, to me, what is a very interesting space. And that is the space of a guy who I don't think has many detractors. Nope. Like, Tom Segura is pretty universally either liked or not cared about. Right, ignored. Right. Nobody really dislikes Tom Segura, except Red Bar, but he fucking dislikes everybody. It's a gimmick. Um, he's prickly. He's prickly. Tom Segura does a show with Burt Kreischer, who a lot of people hate. A lot of people dislike Burt. But I think in this next clip, Burt's about to be the most, you're not going to believe this, the most self-aware guy in the room. Okay. And the most likable guy Ooh. in the room. Uh, Tom Segura is a classic case of like, when you try to get your audience to love you too much, you now run yourself into this place where you can't fuck up. Yeah. Like if you're someone who's just honest and you are who you are day to day doing a show, I hate to brag, but like me, your audience gives you leeway when you have a bad take or you go off on a rant or you lose your head for a little bit. Right. Because they're like, hey, well, it's authentic and he's always authentic. He's just telling me who he is. He'll get over it. Be back to this the next day. But when you try to be the guy that everybody likes, two things happen. One, people find you boring. True. Which is not the worst thing in the world because that's the biggest criticism I've ever heard people have of Tom Segura is that he's boring. And that's easy. Like, that's easy to get over. Can get so much worse than that. Right. That's, that's a pretty mild criticism. And by the way, that would be my criticism of Tom. I, I don't listen to any of Tom's stuff. I find him to be a little ambient. He doesn't catch my attention. Right. But he doesn't need me to like him. But with Tom Segura, he set himself up now where he can't shit on his audience because he's talked about how awesome and trolly they are and my audience does all this fun shit. And he loves it. When they go and they harass somebody or they play a joke on somebody, Tom Segura will talk about it on his show and he'll, he'll laugh his fucking balls off. Well, now I guess his audience is kind of trolling him back. Really? And he doesn't like it. Fun. And to me, this can be, if you don't handle this right, this can be the beginning of the end for a podcaster. Because, like, let, let's take, for example, I told that story on the show about the uh, cranberry walnut bread. Yes. And now my timeline is always full of people making loaf piggy jokes. That's very fun. Loaf piggy memes. It's fucking hilarious. It's texting me, April, hide right. the bread. <laughs> it's really, really funny. Yeah. Uh, but if you're going to be a guy who laughs when their audience fucks with other people, you have to then be okay with it when it happens to you. Otherwise, you just look like a bully. It's true. You just look like a guy who, oh, it's... And you look like a hypocrite, which people hate. Mm -hmm. uh, so Tom has run into this point where it could be do or die for him. And he... Because he decided to shit on his audience. And now his audience is shitting on him harder... And now he's doubling down. We've got a couple of clips to play for you when it comes to Tom Segura. This is he and Bert on their podcast, Two Bears, One Cave. The mistake Tom's going to make here is caring too much what a few people in his audience think. Now, we Ooh. have about 40,000 okay. unique viewers on our show every month. That's more than we That's four times what we had on radio. That's a great number. It's a pissant number to Tom Segura. Yes. It's fucking dog shit i'm guessing hundreds of thousands of people are watching his show every month maybe a million i don't know I'm, I, i'll be honest i don't know exactly how big tom segura's show is but it's very successful either way they'd be sad with our numbers right? at forty thousand people i don't really fucking care if two people don't like something we did or was uncomfortable with something we did when it gets to like 15 20 30 people i go okay this is now a theme and i should probably address this Mm -hmm. But if one guy says one thing, I learned a long time ago, eh, who cares? Everybody gets an opinion. Go with the know? masses, right? I'm not going to let it fuck up my shit. Right. Well, watch Tom let it fuck up his shit. We talk about like a watch or a car. <laughs> I'll get this, uh, like a, a bunch of messages from losers that try to tell me that mm -hmm. I'm, I'm making them feel bad about their situation. You're in control of your own situation. 
and your own feelings. So don't put it on me. So, so now, I like Bert in this clip, and people are going to hate me for this. Bert is realizing that Tom's going down a bad road right now. Yeah. And yeah. he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't call the audience fucking losers. You can call the audience losers if they're being shitty and mean and unfair. You can't call the audience shitty losers if all they're saying is, hey, man, when you talk about being really wealthy, you know, I'm having a tough time financially, and that makes me feel bad. Um, I've got a bit of a reputation as a guy who can be kind of an asshole sometimes, right? Say it ain't so. If an audience member wrote to me and said, hey, you guys talked about playing blackjack on your show. Yes. Uh, I don't. I don't play, uh, I, I like to play blackjack, but I don't play anymore because times have been really tough for me and so on and so forth. Uh, I would say to that, per I would actually respond to that person. I'll go, hey man, I wasn't thinking about that. I'm sorry that made you feel that way. I'm gonna take that into consideration the next time I think about talking mm -hmm. about this because you know it's not that important to the show. It's not a big deal. It's kind of a stupid aside. And my the goal of my show is not to make people who like me feel like shit. So all right, something to consider. Or let's say I thought that guy was being way too sensitive. I would just like the comment, move on with my day. You forget about it. Thanks for commenting. I'm not going to go on my show and go, let me tell you about the fucking losers that pay for this show. These fucking losers who buy our advertisers shit, who become members of ours on our YouTube channel, who feed us millions of dollars every year. Let me call these fucking people losers because they might be struggling and me talking about the new sports car that I bought might make them feel like shit. A little bit biting the hand that feeds them. I'm going to tell uh, Tom Segura what Dave Chappelle told Kanye West. What you're doing right now, and we're only, we got still a minute left in this rant. What you're doing now is fine to think it. Yes, yep. That's doesn't fine. work very well to say it out loud. When you've got an audience full of people who are working for a living and they financially support you, you don't get to call them losers and poor pe and poors and poor people. Like the poors bit we do is like very much tongue in cheek. It's sarcastic. It's funny. You don't get to attack people for that. That you feel bad that I have something that, oh, but I, I'm struggling with rent this month. Figure it the fuck out, okay? Wow. Like, don't make my life be a problem for your life. If you don't like it, guess Bert, Bert does not want to jump in on this. He very much has a look of caution on his face. Bert is looking at his buddy like, dude, probably. Because say what you want about Bert Kreischer, you know, and I've criticized him up and down. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like controversy. No, and the optics of this are really bad. He doesn't like discomfort, you know? Mm -hmm. He's a fucking party frat boy who wants to get shit faced and do dumb shit and take his shirt off and take his shirt off that's his thing he doesn't want to be yelling at the audience calling them poor people and telling them they're stupid guess what you're not going to be able to control what people talk about people are going to talk about things that you don't have for the rest of your fucking life here's the thing if you're if you're still <laughs> oh that I, we got to go Woo. back and watch that burt kreischer reaction again and second of all tom I wish you would just be honest with this clip because what Tom's doing is what a lot of podcasters do. They get offended or hurt by something mm -hmm. and then they lash out and hurt the audience member that said it. It just feels like he's basically saying, no, fuck you. Why I'm not angry. just admit that that guy saying that fucked with you a little? Sure. It fucked with your head and you thought to yourself for a minute, huh, maybe I am being kind of a dick to people who don't have very much money and who support me. And then you went... No, 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 no. I got to be allowed to talk about whatever I want. I got to be able to do my show. That's not true. There. That's it. It's done now. Yep. We, not, we don't have to talk about it anymore. Move along. But instead, you go on a rant on your show. I, I got news for you, Tom. A lot more of your audience is going to identify with that guy than identifies with you. That you don't have for the rest of your fucking life. Here's the thing. If you're, if you're oh. still mad about this, just know that it's your mindset. And you're thinking like a fucking loser. Oh, so now he's blaming the listener, too, for being in his position, which might not be untrue. But it was never part of what that, that guy wasn't was saying. the argument. And not only that, you're hurt. Just be honest and say you're hurt. It upset you. Now you're trying to play it off like you're in some position of strength. Meanwhile, you're taking your working class audience that, again, supports you financially mm -hmm. and you're shitting on them. 
Right. Like, I, he could just say that he feels bad for how he lives his life now because it is hurting him that way. Right. It obviously made you feel shitty, and yeah. now you're trying to hide it. But also, it's one thing to read someone's message and then criticize their message. Yep. But when you went, hey, all of you people who are struggling with rent this month or all of you people who identify with that guy, the only reason you're feeling that is because you're a fucking loser and you need to figure your shit out. Right, he just placed a lot of blame Oof, on the listener. That is a bad move. And the reason I came across this clip is because on, um, I don't remember what subreddit it was. Uh, I believe it was the Fighter and the Kids subreddit. They said, hey, what's going on with Tom Segura? His whole audience on his Reddit page is turning on him. Okay. In the last 24 to 48 hours. Well, and, and then I found the clip. And I'm like, oh boy. Th this is one of those things, like it's it's weird to watch these podcasts get big and then watch them possibly get undone by one thing. It's what you said about like more people are going to identify with this listener than him. That was so correct. These people yeah. support you because they usually go to shows like us or him or whoever yeah. to like get them through part of their day, you know? Yeah, and look, I mean, if, if you can... Um if you want to turn off memberships and make it and, and turn off whatever Patreon or whatever you might have and tell your audience, look, I don't need your money. I'll just do the show and I'll do it for advertising dollars or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then, OK, that's fine. But if you're financially dependent on these people and they're telling you that they're struggling, if you do a network show and your audience doesn't have to give you a dime, it's just free to consume. Yep. Then, OK, talk however you want. In my opinion, as someone who does a listener supported show. If you're going to take money from your audience, they just bought a stock in the company. Yes. And every shareholder gets an opinion. You don't get to pull this shit where you go, you're a fucking loser and your opinion doesn't matter. Well, yeah, it does. Because there's going to be a lot of people like him hearing you talk like this. There's plenty of people that hop in our chat sometimes and don't like whatever you brought up to talk about. Right. But they did pay, they've contributed, and they get an opinion. But... You don't have to. You don't. You can change the way you think, but you have to accept the way you're thinking right now is not going to get you anywhere. You're now, that would be fine if you were giving advice that they said, oh, I'm just very sad about my life in general. You're not doing that, Tom. You're telling them that them hating you for talking about something is because they're a fucking loser. Mm -hmm. That their opinion about what you're doing, you're now deflecting it and saying, well, it's just because you're a poor, bitter loser. It's not the things you're saying. It's why you're saying them. Yep. It's where it's coming from. You're being bitter. You're being petty. You're insecure. You're not confident. If you just sit around and then you, oh, you know what? You only have what you have because of fans. So don't talk about us like that. Yeah, but you're still a loser. If you're thinking. But that, no, you just needed to stop after you only have what you have because of your listeners and your fans. That's yes. it. The end of sentence. It's 100% what it is. But you're still a loser. Tom, again. Tom Segura has never been seen as a tough guy. He's not a tough guy. So you talking about this is A, extremely out of place and looks awkward. And B, nobody buys that you're doing this because you're a tough guy. You're doing this because this comment clearly hurt you. Dude, Bert's face says it. Says yeah. it all in this clip. Like he he like, dude, you need to stop. Like that yeah. look on his face. Like he doesn't even want to talk on this. It this is so this bad. is the first time I felt bad for Bert Kreischer. Yeah, this is and he's him doing in a the tough right spot. Bert's actually handling this very well. He is. I wouldn't have said anything either. Thinking like that. You may be uh I'm lucky to have you as a loser fan, but you don't have to be that way. You could be a winner. Yeah, you could be a his winner. His whole production crew is laughing at him. Well, I think they think it's funny that he's shitting on people like that. I don't know. I bet there's people in there that are like, no, I wouldn't have a job if it weren't for these losers. Well, let's go to some so. of the uh, audience's responses. Then we'll play his response. Because then his wife, Christina, who... Look, I have no reason to dislike her. I don't think she's a bad person. But, I mean, this is it's clearly a nepotism case. She's... Uh, Okay. She's Tom Segura's wife, and that's why she's on the show. Uh, I'm not saying she can't be good. I mean, shit, April got on this show because she's my wife. That I, doesn't mean right. she's not good at it. I but, have to stay here for a reason, though. Like, but, I have to be good. Yeah. Um, she brings it up to Tom, and he has a chance to make things right. And uh, because, it, you know, you don't bring shit like this up to the host of the show unless you are concerned mm -hmm. that it's hurting things. Right. Like, if you saw a couple of people give me shit about something, you wouldn't bring it up on the show unless you were like, hey, do you think this is going to fuck us up? I 
know better because I, typically in this realm, if you're not worried about something, I shouldn't be either. Right. That's kind of what I've learned. I've gone through real problems in terms of broadcasting. I've been through a few controversies. I know when something's a big deal and when something should be ignored. Uh, Stevie J says, uh, Rogan has a few dozen nipples and Tom Segura suckles at one of them. Tom definitely borrowed a lot of his audience from Joe Rogan. There's no doubt about that. Uh, a lot of people are actually saying they're glad that people are turning on Tom Segura. I Really? I never got that. Like I, I To me, Tom was just boring. I didn't really mm -hmm. feel the need to like him or dislike him. That's why I don't watch him. Uh, Shane says, Tom has accurately identified with his audience. He can only embrace his fans for so long before he will start talking some truth. His fandom has been clearly exposed by Tom, which shows his fakeness. Right. If you've thought this way about your audience for this long and you're only letting it out now, then are you a phony piece of shit all the rest of the time? Right. I just, I think so. Adam, see, I want to hear from people who know about Tom Segura because, like I said, I, I don't really, I didn't get into him. Uh, Adam Price says, Tom never shows emotions like this. Yeah, something got to him. Yeah, that bugged Somebody him. made him feel shitty for doing something a little bougie, and yeah. uh, he doesn't like the guilt. Which is fine. If you're a wealthy guy, and you got wealthy because you have a lot of audience members, and they all chip in five, ten bucks a month to you or something, and it made you a millionaire, that's great. That's wonderful. But you do now owe those people. Mm -hmm. Much like if you work for it. One of the trade-offs of not having to work for a network is you can do any kind of show you want. But if you're on a network, you have to kiss the network's ass. Yep. If you're not on a network, you don't have to kiss a network's ass. But you do kind of have to kiss the ass of the people who make your show possible. They get an opinion. Right. Uh, Farley Birdzone with 50 bucks says, Happy Merry Christmas, belated Christmas. Thank you for a wonderful year. You two always make me sm uh, laugh, smile, and think. I appreciate you too. Thank you for being so kind to me. Love, Farley. Well, wow. thanks, buddy. That's Thank uh, very nice of you. Merry Christmas to you too. Uh, Christina P was actually more famous. Uh, was more famous before Tom says fair and balanced. Then she had her kids and she stopped. She had a special first. Oh, okay. Well, Interesting. then I'm. Then I'm wrong. I don't know anything about her. Uh, thank you exactly six million with five bucks says Tom does a show with his wife. What kind of hack does that? Uh, right? Exactly. Here's my opinion. A lot of times like being the significant other will open the opportunity for you to be there, but you've got to do something to make you stay there. Right. It'll get like, you in the door. I, I wouldn't be here at all if this show wasn't growing. Uh, with fair, me on it. fair and balanced says, uh, I feel like they were all nervous laughing. Right. At Tom. Okay. That's, That's how I felt. Possible. So now Tom has a chance to... Put this all to bed. Uh, his his wife's going to ask him about the controversy about the fucking losers thing. And this was on Friday, I believe. Okay. Uh, on your mom's house, their podcast. And uh, this is what he had to say about the controversy. Now, you, you have to be careful because things like this, there's two, there's only two roads it can go down. You can bury it, put it away, and it'll go away and you can go on and do your show. Mm-hmm. Or you can handle it poorly. You can double down. And I'm not saying that Tom Segura just dies and he goes away. No. But your show is done growing now. And you you go into the fighter and the kid effect. You're going to plateau. Right. The fighter and the kid is not like about to die. But the fighter and the kid is never going to peak again. And it's on its way down. It'll be a slow decline. They'll still be able to do that show, I think, for years. Yeah. But it's just going to be a slow decline and remember what it used to be. You got to, I mean, especially in podcasting, more so than in television or radio or anything else. Because like in television, you can do a shitty episode and your audience will forgive you for it and tune in the next week. In podcasting, it's such a personal connection platform. You can't fuck up very much at all. Right. And you're allowed it's a few tiny fuck ups, but only one really big one. And you got to handle it right. I think you have to handle them all the right way. Wait, uh, my stylist got them for me for a special. Very relatable. Oh, is that? Uh. Oh, so he's already being kind of cunty about it. Whoa. Very relatable. Okay. It still bugs the shit out of him. He doesn't. What a weird thing. Like you're mad at somebody else for calling you out for being a little bougie. And, and how strange is they this? they can't live that way. Well, and now he's mad that since that rant, his audience has been trolling the shit out of him. Mr. I love it when my audience trolls people. It's so much fun to have the trolls going out and doing this, that, and the other thing. 
But then when it comes back to him, you fucking losers, you fucking haters, mm -hmm. you pieces of shit. No, 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 no. I'll give Brendan Schaub this. Brendan Schaub never asked his fans to go out and fuck with somebody or bother somebody or troll somebody. So when he gets trolls and haters and he feels really sensitive about it, yeah, it's gay, but it's not hypocritical. <laughs> right. Tom is being hypocritical and condescending at the same time, which is not a good look. Wow, says the most viral rant on the net right now, guy. You care to super relatable? You care to talk about that? Uh, sure. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I guess you know, I did a podcast with Bart. Uh, it was a few weeks ago, and I think I had just <laughs> seen somebody be like. Like, you know, like the podcast, sometimes they'll be like, like the podcast, really don't like when you talk about like that you got to watch or, or you guys will t you talk about like. Do you know how light that is? That is extremely light. Aaron's got to watch before he got a little shit. It was funny. Right. And then it, you move on. When your audience pays for your show mm -hmm. and then they see you bought something nice for yourself with the money you make from the show, they get to give you shit about it. They paid for the fucking thing. They're allowed to shit on you for it. You've got the watch, dipshit. You're fine. I had to hear some bad words about me. <laughs> this is a guy who's very milk toast and boring, April. He's not used to hearing that people don't yeah, like him. It gets to him. It bothers him. You got to have a little dirt on you. I don't like hearing you got that new car. I can't the, afford a new car. He even admitted that the comment started yeah. with, I like your show. Do you know that if someone shits on me for three paragraphs and says, and you're an incredibly talented guy, the only thing I see in that whole comment is you're an incredibly talented guy. She's oh, yeah. seen it. Yep. Oh, how many, how many people get in here and troll you a little bit and say, no, no, like you get a little like address it and then, no, I love the show. Oh, well, then we're fine. Yeah, then we're fine. <laughs> Like, we're, we're buddies. <laughs> I'm the opposite of Alex Stein in that way. Remember, Alex told us, he's like, Aaron, you know, we both got on, off on the wrong foot. I like you. You like me. It's just that, you know, if you see 100 people laughing and two aren't, you focus on the two. Not me. I've always focused on the 100. At one point in my life, I did focus on the two. But then I realized how much fun it is to focus on the 100 and how much fun it was to leave the two people out. Because remember, if 100 people are laughing and you decide to gang up with them, then those two are left out. Like they're, okay, they feel cool because they're not going with the crowd, but also all of you over here are having a good time. So who gives a fuck if Dude, those people don't enjoy it? People call you loaf piggy and make fun of your hairline and you still love them. Uh, there are, <laughs> uh, like, I don't know if they still make fun of us. I don't see any, I, I, I haven't seen any of their stuff. I just don't. It's, and it's not me trying to be like a dick to them. They're just, they don't have a, a big reach. Those Mind Scepter guys would say I had Kleinfelter syndrome. That was like, they went deep and like, he wow. has Kleinfelter syndrome, which is kind of funny. And you laugh at that and you go, all right, those guys, you know, they're off with a 100 member subreddit having their fun, you know, best of luck. Or like that total BS show was like, well, when we made fun of you, we weren't trying to. And you're like, dude, fucking relax. Make your jokes. Do your show. Knock it off. Stop worrying so much, Tom, about what people are saying about you and just do your fucking show. Don't try to be loved by everybody. They're never going to love They're you. They're never going to love you. And certainly don't flip the fuck out over a fan who just said, eh, it just bums me out when you get new shit and I just feel bad about myself. That's There's well, no need to respond to that. And I don't know if you've ever noticed, but the harder you try to make somebody love you, the more like they pull away. Yeah. Any success you've had because like I'm having a hard time. So therefore, and I was like, what a fucking loser, you know, like Jesus. To, to, to read somebody going like, hey, uh, you talking about something that's good or, or, or you know, a, a success in your life. It, it makes me feel bad about my right. life. And that's not an uncommon feeling amongst people. No, I feel like that's pretty normal. People actually. see their friend get a nice new big house. And some people, I mean, I, I don't do this, but I understand that some people might see that and they start might start measuring their own life and going, I feel like I haven't accomplished as much. I see that a lot when people get engaged or get married and the forever single people kind of yeah. pout on the sidelines. You exactly. Know? The married person doesn't feel the need to then taunt the single person right. and go, you fucking loser. You're only single because of yourself. It's like, no, they're just emoting for a minute. Just let them be. 
And also when Tom and Christina, like Bert had the right idea to laugh and look nervous and go, huh, I shouldn't do this. But when Christina joins in with him mm -hmm. and enjoys it with him, what Tom doesn't understand is, and maybe because he started with nothing as a comic, it looks like two rich people chortling at poor people. It absolutely does. Look at even, like maybe not how he's dressed, but like the whole room and how she's dressed. Like they look lavish, right? Right, which is great. It's fun. That's wonderful. But uh, then don't go and call people who don't have that yeah, stuff fucking losers and then giggle at them, especially when they're your audience. They're giving you your lavish lifestyle. Right. It just really, I guess two things have kind of come up uh, repeatedly where I guess it, it strikes a nerve in me just because I go, I just hate being around people who have excuses, you know, because yeah. uh, we've all been there. Like I've also, I'm not going to act like I've never, I, I, you know, I've been there and I'm sure I, I will continue to be, meaning it is a, it is a pitfall in life. To it's just, a human thing. It's a human. You don't understand, Tom, you're going through it right now. You just don't know it. You're feeling shitty about this and you're trying to play it off as strength. Just admit, I feel shitty, I feel conflicted, and there's a part of me, you know what he's doing? He's doing that thing I always talk about when you do a show. Mm -hmm. Somebody's criticism hit with you because yeah. you thought it first. Yep, and then it comes out as projection. And then it comes out as projection, and that's what Segura is doing here. He's thought this before. Like, hey, if I talk about this watch or this car, are the poor people who listen to me going to think I'm a fucking asshole? And, like, I've lost my way and I'm not the same Tom anymore. So then he sees one fucking person write that, where if you're not insecure and you understand what that feeling in your head is, is just mm -hmm. you having an a internal struggle, a comp, if you will. <laughs> then that one comment, you can go, ah, that sucks, that's shitty, but, you know, maybe I'll cool it on that shit. I don't you know, know what most people but, do? They but, think about it later or not at all. Right. But if you think it in your head and then that person says it and then that triggers you and you start attacking, all that shows is that you were remarkably bothered by that comment and you've thought about it yourself a few times. But how easy would it have just been to be like, oh, I do feel a little shitty about that. Maybe I'll, you know, right. omit that from he can't, my does, show. Doesn't want to admit the weakness. Thing, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not immune to them, but I try to not embrace them. And so when I see people going like you know, when you talk about like a cool thing you got or like a you know, you got a car, you got a car, you know, it sucks because I don't have one. I'm like, oh, you're thinking like a real fucking dipshit loser, you know, because um, like you're struggling. No, make sure that nobody brings up something that doesn't make you feel a certain way. It's like, look, man, you, you know, I mean, I'll tell I'll play for you what I said on the. Yeah, but you're the guy with the nice car. You're the guy with the big house. That guy's struggling a little. Could we not bury him on our fucking podcast? He's not important enough. If he was another podcaster, sure, rip his fucking heart out. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. If he was another entertainer, rip his heart out. Go ahead. This is a fan of yours. This is a guy who likes you. Who's struggling and still comes by and supports you. Right. And Come then on. you're going, boy, you're a real dipshit loser. Like, uh, there's been times during this recession we're all in where Aaron and I have both felt extremely humbled that people still come here. Right where we're an expendable show technically in your life and you still support us. And again, it's buying a stock. Yeah. And when you buy a stock, you get an opinion. That's part of the deal. I got to put up with it from you guys. That's fair. If a stranger comes in, starts shitting on the show or whatever, yeah, then go after him. Fuck him. But, I mean, to do this to a fan, that's a real piece of shit move. Yeah, let's show, hear so. Every time we talk about, like, a Should watch or a car... I'll get us uh, like a, a bunch of messages Here, let's from Luke. Skip. <laughs> you don't have to be that way. You could be a winner. It's so true, Tom. Well, so it, it, you know, I guess I was bothered because I just, I don't like hearing, I don't like hearing right. the excuses. Uh, uh, you know, no, 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 no. Now you're trying to turn it into like you're fucking mm. Jordan Peterson and clean your room, bucko. You don't like to hear it because you do feel guilty on some level. Yes. You've thought it before. It makes you feel bad that you're seen that way because poor Tom just wants to be liked by everybody. You don't go. Don't give me this loser shit. You think your audience is really cool. I've listened to you on Rogan before. You're very proud of your audience. You like your audience. You think there are a lot of cool people. The minute they said something that made you uncomfortable, then they're fucking losers. Tom, that ain't a loyal guy. That ain't a guy that people want to follow. If the minute you upset Daddy Tom about, especially if you run a show that's based on trolling. Yep. 
Oh, yeah. If you run a show on funny pranks and funny trolls of, you know, Garth Brooks and other people, you can't then get pissy when people want to have an opinion about you. You've taught them how to be. You've taught them how to be this way. This would be like me getting up. This is like even more petty than, than if I got upset at Loaf Piggy. It's more petty than that because Tom's got a six-figure car out of the deal. To me, I'm kind of starting to see this too. It's like if kids screw up and stuff and they learn that they can't go to their dad about it because their dad's just going to bitch and yell and scream and hit them, like they're not going to come back to Whoa, you. Whoa, wait, what? <laughs> you know. But the, what, it, what it extends to also it reminds me of, uh, to me, this has a direct correlation also with uh, health and fitness. Yes. Because what happens... Oh, so now they're fat dipshit losers. That Tom, you're really knocking it out of the park here, buddy. Once you call them losers, you might as well pile on. Now they're fat dipshit what retard losers. What are you going to do? Back down from what you said. They're probably trans, too, and probably gay. drug addicts. Bunch of Blair Whites. Pulling their dicks out to pay for alcohol. Know, <laughs> again, my whole life, people around me, it's very easy to go like, um, I, you know, I want to work out. And then you go, yeah, but... But nah, there's a but. There's always a but. I'm yeah. tired or this is, you know, I, I don't feel like it today. Like there's always an excuse, right? Yeah. Then I found that the latest thing, this I, was unexpected. So there's always, people always have excuses for why they can't. Mm -hmm. I can't, I got things to do. I can't, I, this is why I can't eat health. Oh, no, no, hold on, fuckhead. Not all of us have Joe fucking Rogan to prop us up. I, you know what? I'm tired of this made man shit. I'm tired of these fucking ass. What is it about Rogan? And I love Rogan. But what is it about Rogan where he happens to pick these ungrateful cunts I don't know. who land on third base and think they hit a fucking triple? It seems like all of them, too. I, I can't think of one who doesn't behave this way. <laughs> Guys, I'm telling you, Brendan Schaub is not the most cancerous Rogan guy. Brendan, in many ways, and I know not totally, is an innocent. Because this piece of shit is smart enough to know what he's doing. And he's still doing it. I picked myself up by my bootstraps. Oh, why don't you fat, pathetic losers just... Rogan can say that to people. Rogan's allowed to say that. You, hey, that guy criticizing you for buying your new car or your new wristwatch or whatever it is you bought, Tom, he doesn't have a friend who happens to be the most famous mm -hmm. podcaster in the world who can put him on his show, shout him out a couple of times, and go, here's a 100,000 fan head start. Go ahead. So that 10 years later, you could sit there and cock off like you're a, a self-made man. <sighs> you know, again, my thoughts on Tom Segura before this whole thing were just harmless. He's boring. I, it's not my thing. He's fine. He's a little cunt. He is pretty cunty. And all because it bothered him because he doesn't really believe the self-made man thing. He knows there is that insecurity He's, in him. Most people that act this way are really insecure. Yes. You know what Bre You know what Brendan does that he doesn't? What? He ignores the haters, B. He ignores the haters, B. He lets hella Mark Harley take care of it for him. Yes. That's, you know what, I never... Let the big gay lion eat them. You know what, I, ne I never thought I'd say this. <laughs> Tom Segura needs a hell of Mark Harley. Ugh, God. Get Tom a big gay lion. I, don't, I no. thought that was what Bert was for. I don't think we can handle more than one. Do Bert Kreischer and Brendan Schaub have gone up my leaderboard. I hope Bert hears After that. watching this. I do. This is why I can't work out. So I started to take fitness more seriously, I'd say, in the last year, you know? And so some people notice... And they go, uh, you know, congratulations, or that's great. Wow, you're a real keep going. superhero. Like they, positive. And then you always find some people who go, uh, must be nice. Right. And you're like, what must be nice? And they're like, I mean, it must be nice that you can afford to, uh, you know, go to the gym. And like, I'm like, wait. Tom, that's fair. Extremely fair right They're now. not saying you're a piece of shit. They're doing the same thing you are. They're projecting their own shit onto you, and then you take that and project your own shit onto the audience. How can you shit on these people when you don't see that you're doing exactly the same thing they are? And you know what he could say in that instance? He could say, yeah, it is, yeah. It is nice. Um, I hope you find yourself in a better position where you can do this too. Here's a remarkable way to handle this, and it's very easy. Oh, it must be nice to be able to afford all that gym equipment and exercise and all that, and you could go... Yeah, you know, it's really nice. I'm humbled that you guys support this show to the level where I'm able yes. to be in a position where I can get myself in shape. I thank you guys for that, and I try to pay that back with gratitude and a good show every single day. Thank you all so much for that. And if you can't find yourself 
in a position to to work out every day. And here's some things you can do. Here's some stuff I found that's free that can help you out. That's what we always try to say too. So obviously you guys that are listening all support us big time. Like we could have taken today off and all that, but we're sitting here yesterday. Like these shows are, are they're paid for. Yeah. Um, we the audience is, yeah. We owe you a good show for the hard earned money you spend. And, and what's going to be hurt? My vanity because the numbers won't be as high. <laughs> Big deal. I won't even look at them, to right. be honest. Wait, wait, wait. So right. is your position that only people with money are into fitness? Right. Into it's easy. No, they're saying it's easier, you disingenuous douchebag. Oh, what's the over under that he starts talking about? Like, oh, you can't go for a run outside. Oh, here we go. Okay, let's see. Take care of themselves the because I can point to you. I can point you towards... A hundred more people I know that don't have money that take their health and fitness very seriously. What about Good guys in prison? Some of them look real fit. <laughs> yeah. Those guys don't have trainers or and diet. guess what? <laughs> oh my God. It's called being afraid to eat because you're worried you'll get butt fucked if you take somebody's dinner roll. This is weird. She's, this is a weird that one was, to bring That up. was an awful comment. Yeah, it Nothing. was. You can go to prison too and you can get in shape. <laughs> And that's what we're trying to say. Yeah, but then you'll have a felony on your record and you won't be able to find work. And then Tom Segura will call you a fucking loser because you can't find a job so you don't have any money. Also an incredibly dumb statement because when you're in jail, all you have time for is to get fit. Like that's people right. have to work jobs out here gotta to get, buy their food and stuff. Got to get that asshole fit, you know. Well, like you got to do pounding. a lot of squats to make sure there's a lot of cushion around that asshole. And you get to go to the Bob Levy comedy show. It's true. Yeah, that's what the whole point of this is. <laughs> Get arrested and go to prison and lose weight. No, but I, Tom, I think when I, I could do without the lackeys in the background cackling. I never liked that on shows. I it's hate like that too. I'll decide what's funny. It's kind of like having a laugh track. Yeah. Saw this clip. I I was like, that's my baby right there because yeah. I feel like today the victim mentality is being it's so embraced. Great. Now yes. wow. a decade ago, if you would have said this, it wouldn't have been shocking. People yeah. are like, well, obviously, right. there are fucking losers and winners. But now everybody's a winner. You can't say somebody's oh. a fuck. No, 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 no. It's because you called a large chunk of your audience fat, pathetic losers. That's the problem. Do, should these two have a monocle in while they're doing this segment? Should yes. we get them a tux and tails while they're doing this segment or a dunce cap? Either they're too fucking stupid to know or what I think it is, they know they fucked up. They're doubling down and then they're going to play victim that they can't believe their audience is being shitty towards them. With their arguments too, they're completely leaving out all context. Like right. we keep bringing it back to, no, this was your listener specifically that supports you. Yeah, now they're turning You're it. Losing that. Now they're turning it into. Oh, everybody gets a trophy. Okay, you fucking boomers. Is that what it is? Okay, but that might be true, but we're not talking about that right, right now. Right, that's what I mean. Yeah. Oh no, it's because everyone's in a winner mentality, not the losers, and this and then. You can't call people losers. It's like, no, no, no. You can always call people losers. You can still call mm -hmm. people losers today. These people are. You just can't turn on your audience when they have a valid criticism of you or get. Well, you can. They're just going to shit on you back and you don't get to then cry and whine and make these overarching social statements that have nothing to do with the original. That's point. exactly it. They're trying to deflect off to like right. the bigger picture of the world's problems instead right. of their own. Oh Fucking God. loser. Oh, you can't. And, and people love. Here's get the thing. Here. They love to, to give, like, say their excuses. Like they love it and they go, well, well, well you know, because this is of that, it's because of all this. Thing. And then they look. This guy never did that. No. The criticism he got never <laughs> no. did. That's what you guys have to wipe out or remember because there's going to be people watching this who are Segura fans who will go, yeah, this guy sucks. He's off base. He doesn't understand what Tom's saying. No, no, no. You guys have to remember these guys are trying to trick you into thinking this was all about something that it was never about. They're trying to make these horrible, like, douchey, boomer, everybody gets a trophy statements. That was never what the discussion was about. Tom realizes that he fucked up, and he's trying to spin out into some other argument so he can still keep his initial point. Yes. Look for the people to go, exactly. Yep. And then kind of pat them on the back for, like, great excuse Yep. For why things excuses. aren't working out for you. He just said he's struggling. Great excuse on why you are have flatlined in life. Great excuse for why you can't go to the gym or like eat healthy. Like yeah. it, that's good. Good job coming up with your excuse. And you're right. It, Again, none of that was said. I feel like he needs to be talking with his nose far up in the air yeah. and just. Not only that, you know, Tom. You're you're dodging punches that aren't coming at you. You're just being oversensitive is what you're being he's, while accusing other people of being oversensitive. He's telling us a whole lot about himself. Yeah. 
it's people who are in shape. They only have all of them are just in uh, are just rich. Uh, yeah, rich. they're rich people, and they they pay for yeah. their gym and their private chefs. And yeah, like, okay, and, and good position to take. And here's the deal, man. Too is that I will admit that. I think when you and I first started dating, I totally had a loser mentality. I think it's a it's part of growing up. It's part of exactly. Yeah. And either you overcome your own stuff in your mind yes. that tells you like, I okay, well then maybe this is just a young guy who's going through that, right? Just like you did, you fucking elitist. They're you closing scumbag. that door behind him, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I made it through. Now you don't get that chance. Oh, we're gonna call him Tom Silverman now. He's gonna mm. close the door that he walked through. That's nice. Yeah. Boy, she doesn't understand how fucking dumb that sounded. They are perfect for each I other. I'll give when, them I was, when I was really young, I had a loser mentality, and it's just part of growing up. Oh, so when one of your young audience members mm -hmm. comes to you and says the same thing, let's just shit on them and talk about how rich we are. You guys are fucking... You know what the worst part is? You're not even flexing on them because you, it's a position of strength. You're clearly bothered and upset, and you're worried that your fans are coming after you. So you're trying to go on the attack, but you never had the high ground to begin with. People like these two greatly lose sight of what got them here, too. Like they, they forget what, Joe Rogan? the hand up from Rogan. They forget <laughs> like the ones they broke off and did their own show after Rogan gave them the hand up. They yeah. forget about the fans and the supporters and stuff because now they're up here and they see them as down here again. I never want to become that person where we forget that the fans put us here. Again, Ever. dropped on third base, thought he hit a triple. I'm not good enough. They had an advantage. Oh, yeah, that's a new one. Somebody grew up better. I would tell myself, well, that person had a normal family, so they didn't have to deal with the stuff I did. Therefore, yeah. they're going to be successful, and I'm not. Or maybe they're smarter. All of us have some sort of advantage. I got to use a radio audience, bring it over to digital so I could get a head start. That's an advantage, not the one you had, but better than me, better looking than me, thinner than me, more talented than me. I'll never make. Stop listing things that a lot of people are than you. I mean, this, again, this is all very projecty. Make it. Yeah. I'm a loser. Rich people are bad, and fuck them. Fuck the winners. And and you know what I used to do? Not what he's in the my He just said he feels like sh all of this. Remember, guys, all of this because the guy goes, "Oh, I feel shitty because um, I'm behind on rent," and you were talking about. You know how you had a really nice watch, and it just kind of bums me out a little bit. That's all he said. He wasn't attacking you at all. He was just saying, it bums me out when you say that. He just wanted someone to hear that. And he thought you were a guy he could go to because he supports you. I feel And like then you guys went and turned it into this giant rant, which is a double dose of coping mechanism. It, that's big time. But I feel like even as a friend, like if I've got a friend that comes to me and they say like, oh, you know, I see your life's kind of put together and you've got some direction and I just don't and I feel really shitty about myself right now. You don't go call them a loser to their right. face and stuff. You kind of give them a little guidance maybe or an yeah. encouragement. My comedy career is I would- But he's not doing that. He's defending himself. Again, yes. from some, he thinks he's giving advice and being Jordan Peterson. This is all self-defense. Again, from punches that aren't coming at him. Go and look at like back then it was MySpace or Facebook and see what that other comedian had that I didn't have. Mm -hmm. And then be like, yeah, but that's that person has this and this and this. And I don't have that. Fuck that person. Yeah. Instead of going- why am I envious of that other person? There's something in me that wants what they have. Sure. So you're literally saying you've been in this exact same person's shoes and you did the exact same thing he's doing and you grew out of it and you did fine. So mm -hmm. what the fuck are you complaining about? Then how about a little empathy towards this guy? Or at least ignore it. I think once you get to... And look, it's probably different personalities, but for these two, once they've gone to a certain point, em empathy went out the door. I think these two know that there is the prevailing wisdom out there that these two were given a hand up by Rogan and their rise was partially synthetic and they feel insecure about that. Fuck them, but what do they have that I want? Okay, I want that. How do I get there? Maybe I could befriend that person and ask them how they did it. Yeah, you mean like Joe Rogan? Yeah, that would be great. Maybe I can like strategize a way to get what I want instead of wasting my energy hating that other person. Yeah. Tom, mm. let me. I, I want Tom Segura to answer this question, and this is rhetorical. I want him to answer it to himself. If the Joe Rogan experience doesn't exist, does anyone know about the Your Mom's House podcast? Does the Your Mom's House podcast exist and is it a success if the Joe Rogan experience is wiped out? Like a person named Joe Rogan was never put on this earth. Answer that honestly. Yeah. Because that's an energy thing. That's either energy either you thing. put it towards hating the motherfucker that has what you have. Yeah. Or towards putting it into you and getting what you want. 
Like sometimes wow, I used to do this deep. more on Twitter. I love it when millionaires lecture their poor listeners that support them monetarily uh, with how they should be. They don't make themselves relatable at all. Wow. Is yeah. I would just go really hard on a joke. Yeah. Like I'd tweet a really harsh joke and then I would lose a bunch of people and then my next tweet would be like, good. Yeah. I want. I wanted to get rid of the week, you know? Well, good. Good to see you haven't changed. He, he sounds like Mike David, kind of. <laughs> He's In a, a really right. weird way. He's like, no, I don't want that filth around me. Yeah, but all these guys only do that after those people have already left and aren't coming back. It's like a woman dumps you and then you go, well, I don't like you anyway. Like, <laughs> you are a bitch. It's like, well, she kind of already got you, dude. Right. Yeah. I feel like <laughs> I haven't Ew, done that in a minute. And I feel like doing this really, it like if I lost, I lost people that I don't want. Yeah, yeah. And Cowards. it's like, it's a good, it's a Cowards. really good feeling to get rid of them. You know, it's yeah. like. It's coping. I mean, you know, then there's people who want to get their life together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bailey. Play there the you hand go. you're dealt and don't worry about anyone else's hand. That's Basics, what I'm that's saying. That's right, Joseph Bravo. Bravo to Joseph Bravo. Yeah, bra well, all the other guy was saying is that you kind of showed him your hand while he was watching your show. He's not saying, he wasn't peeking at your hand, Tom. You were telling him about, you went, I have uh, three aces and two queens. Like, dude, I only got a, I, I got a two seven offsuit. This fucking sucks. Why are you so worried about what I have? You showed it to me. <laughs> this guy made a really just vulnerable, like, statement about how he felt bad yeah like he needed a conversation with somebody because he felt bad at and that you've moment. now spent a quarter of an hour over two shows explaining this because you're projecting he could, right. he could have just said it's okay buddy i hope you're in a place you yeah. can get that watch someday it's all right buddy you know? hey just keep plugging away like all, all he had to so say easy if this was Man. really if this was really about helping people because this tom Seger is so full of shit if this was really about helping people then he would have went, hey, man, I, I get it. I've been there, too. Mm -hmm. But you keep working hard. You keep going after it. You'll be able to get that watch, too. You'll be there. Just It takes time. It takes effort. Instead, he attacked the guy, shit on him, called him a loser. Then only after he watched thousands of his fans start to turn on him, did he then try to manipulate and change the message into, oh, I was just being Tony Robbins. Joseph, why are you worried about someone else's cards? Don't worry about the don't fucking. Worry don't even it. look in that lane, bro. Yeah. And then this is this Ew. is like a the type of. This so is, wait a minute. So now you're gonna go and just show people saying really positive kiss ass stuff to you? Oh, this is beyond hacky. Where's the other comments? Boy, we are uncomfortable, aren't we, Tom? That's how I was honestly before I had any success, which was that when I would see somebody doing much much better than me, which virtually everybody was. Rogan. Um, you know, I was excited by it. I saw it as something to strive towards. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I enjoyed it. Good, I, then why I didn't you tell that challenge. guy that? Yeah, How am it's I a get challenge, it? but it's also, it's inspiring. I thought it as inspiring. Mm -hmm. And that's what this person is like, basically saying, I live vicariously through these two. Keep talking about, call out the haters. Yeah, but yeah it's like, they're- Be a winner, dude. Keep geez, calling right out the haters. Fucking winner, dude. Um, yeah. See, people, people get different things from it, but I think the- See, look, people like me. See, nobody was saying they don't, Tom. Look, people think that I'm motivational. Nobody was saying that they don't, Tom. Where's this coming? Again, where's this coming from? Massive insecurity. One guy. <laughs> one guy said one thing, and now you've broken down to the point where you're showing your positive comments yeah. off. See, I'm not the biggest fucking asshole in the world. I just delete all the comments that say I am and show you all the good ones. God damn, That's man. too bad. Tom, take a break. Uh, five bucks from Farron. She says, hey, guys, love your show, but can you dial back how many Rolexes you have, Aaron, and how many stylists you have, April? <laughs> Thanks, and keep up the great work. You know what? We'll try. Maybe you'll get there someday. Yeah. Farron. <laughs> bigger than all of us. 